Hey guys, this is Suzanne Light coming back to you today with another teaching video. I apologize that it's been so long, but life is busy, life is hectic, but I have a great lesson today. And I hope that you will stay around to the very end to hear all of it. It's important. Uh, I had one subscriber to tell me that she, um, she sent me a precious birthday card and said that she has three little ones underfoot and that she will pause throughout the day so that she can listen. She can't listen to some of them sometimes all the way through. And I thought, you know, that's a great idea just to, to pause it and, and not, to, not to go away completely from it. Pause it and then go back to it later so that you can hear it. I want to talk to you today about two words that are probably not the most popular words in uh, the society of 2018, but it's surrender and obedience. Surrender and obedience, two words that we probably don't like to think about doing either one of them on a regular occasion. But surrender, most of us, when we think about surrender, especially when we talk about surrendering our wills, we fear of losing dreams and hopes and ambitions that we've got for ourselves. We think that, and, and we're going to talk about walking, you know, that we're walking with God in this aspect. We imagine even those dreams being crushed or discarded uh, just simply because we feel like we have to do away with them. But what we've got to understand about surrender, and when we think of surrender, I imagine the first thing you think about is, you know, putting your hands up. I surrender in battle, or when somebody says, uh, your hands, put your hands up. You know, the policeman will say that, and that means that, you know, your hands are up, so therefore you are limited to what you can actually do. And we may feel like if we surrender to God, that it limits what we can do in our own lives. But in all actuality, when we surrender to Him, it's not that our will is extinguished. It just means that it's simply surrender to Him and He knows ultimately what's best for us all along the way. It's like putting the clay in the potter's hand. And we know that, that Jesus used that illustration in the Bible where he says, mold me and make me into the will that you want. So what it does, it's an act of surrender to our wills. Our wills can get us in a lot of trouble, but it's a surrender of our wills to turn to the master, the one who, who wants to take us as clay and get, make us the very best version that we can be. So when we surrender to Christ, we don't lose. We do not lose. We win. And we've got to get that mindset going. So ultimately, submission, what it does for us, it centers us directly in the will of God. And it gives us the opportunity to experience the best life that we could ever imagine. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty powerful right there. Now, surrender is the key. But Surrendering to Him, just like I've told you so many times on other lessons, it does not say you will never have any problems, you will never have any difficulties. It's saying that when you surrender your will to God, that He will make the best opportunity for you. In other words, when you orient yourself towards God in a way of surrender and obedience, what it does, and think about this literally, it flings open the door of opportunity for him to be able to minister to us, for us to be able to hear his voice, what he wants, and for his will to be accomplished. Flings open the door when you say, I surrender all. There's an old hymn that I love so much. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. I have to periodically re-surrender and give him back things that I've tried to take away from him and fix myself when I make a mess of them, knowing that all along that he has the answer. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. But I think it's human nature sometimes for us to want to fix it. We even want to fix it for God. We don't even want to bother him with things that he is saying all along. Give it to me, Suzanne. Quit trying to fix it. And he has spoken to my spirit before and said, I didn't ask you to fix it. I've shared this with y'all before. I didn't ask you to fix it. As a matter of fact, when you are trying to fix it, you are getting in my way. You are in my way of doing what I need to do. So I want to be able to, to surrender to his will. Psalms 
26, 26 2 says, Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart. So, in other words, examine me and reveal to me the things that I need to let go, the things that I need to let you handle instead of me. Psalms 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way in which you should go. I will counsel with you with my eye upon you. In other words, I will give you the advice that you need for life. I'll give you that advice. Now, it takes courage to surrender willingly. It takes tenacity. And that's where I said I have to surrender over again sometimes because I have to quit surrendering something and then trying to pick it back up to fix it. Um, what he's saying is that even though you don't have full clarity of what's going on around you, trust in me. Let me make a way where there seems to be no way. I'll instruct you either now or in the future and make the choice in advance to say, yes, Lord, I am surrendering to you. I believe that in relationships, in careers, in so many decisions in our lives, that once we do actually surrender to him, we will see. I mean, I've had so many of my young ladies just say, you know, I, I just trusted in him and he took care of it. And we say, you know, the world would say, well, that's stupid. You've got, to, you've got to take the bull by the horns and you've got to take charge of your own life. And I believe in that. I believe in making plans. I believe in being proactive in our careers and our lives. But I also believe that while I'm doing that, I'm saying, Lord, order my steps. Make sure that I am walking where you want me to walk. So, uh, you know, think back right now to the things that you may be holding on to that you know in your heart or you may even want God to search your heart to see what things you need to surrender unto Him that may be holding you back from living the best life, the best possible life. Now, there's times that we go through things that leaves us hurt and bitter and disgusted, uh, discouraged. So we will also need to ask God while we're in this process of surrendering to remove any callous places that would hinder us, that would be blocking us from hearing the voice of God. Now, we've all got callous places in our heart. If you've lived any length of time, you've been hurt. You've been betrayed. You've um, been terribly discouraged. And so, that is a normal thing to happen. But it's just like we have to decide what we're going to do with that. Um, betrayal is a horrible thing. Betrayal of someone that you really love is a horrible thing, and it's a horrible thing to get over. And people say, oh, you got to forgive and forget. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You do have to forgive. But you're human, and you're not going to forget. But you have to put it under the blood of Jesus, because forgiveness is not really, and this is not even in my notes, but it's not even really for the person that's hurt you. It's for you. It releases you. And But if we keep holding on to it, Underneath the callus, John has a horrible time with a corn on his toe. And, and, and he's just about decided we may go under the foot doctor. He's going to have to have it removed because if anything rubs it the wrong way, it gets inflamed up underneath that corn, up underneath that callus. Even though the callus looks rough and it looks like nothing could ever penetrate through it, it's still very sore and hurtful underneath. And that's the way things can be in our life, that we have to yield to Him to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. There have been things, there have been people in my life that I thought that I had forgiven, and I had gone through the act of forgiveness, but the enemy will try to stir up a sore underneath the callus, a place that I 
put a band-aid on trying to make it better instead of actually letting it go and I've realized I've got to let it go in order that it's not even there will I ever forget it no but I truly have to let it go because I don't want it to block what God has for me so and then we talk about obedience now obedience can be a very intimidating word I know in some marriage vows people have said before I'm not saying I'll obey him I'm not saying that but and I, and I mean obedience can even depend on your upbringing and how you know it was handled how you know obedience was used in your life growing up but instead of obedience in in the walk with Christ instead of it being stifling and oppressive as the world and even you may have thoughts in your mind you need to look at it through your obedience that it can be life-giving and fulfilling of saying that I'm obeying to the master of the wind I'm obeying I'm 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 in obedience to the peace speaker I'm in obedience to the one who opened the Red Sea for the children of Israel to walk across I'm obedient to the and I have that resurrection power in me to the same Christ that rose again so we don't need to let that word um, be a thread on our independence. Right the opposite. It gives us freedom. We can walk in freedom when we walk in obedience. So it's not legalistic in the kingdom of God. It's not lacking in affection when you're obedient to him. Just means that the love of God is going to be poured on you even more because you're walking in obedience to him. Uh, Matthew 16, 25, this is the New Living Translation, says, If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. So he's saying, there is freedom in my name. Don't try to hang on to this old earthly life and the things that the earth can give, but to pick up the cross and follow me. Matthew 16, 24 says, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. And that's what he's meaning, to walk in surrender, to walk in obedience. And I love this. I put this on my Facebook the other day. Obedience is not a no from God. It is actually his best yes. Oh, I love that. Obedience is not a no from God. It is actually his best yes. It opens up oceans of grace and freedom for us. So without our intentional surrender to the former, so without surrendering everything from the former part of our life, we cannot receive the blessings of the latter. We cannot, if we're holding on to old things and we're holding on to the things of the world, it will not allow him to bless us with the things of the latter, the things that's, uh, that he's got for us. If left to our flesh tendencies toward rebellion, we will live in a consistent state of resistance toward God. So we have to say, Lord, help me to put that flesh aside. Help me intentionally strategize to pursue your obedience. And like I said, there will be things that will come up new, you know, in your life. And you have to decide, okay, God, what is it that you're wanting me to do? Make sure that I'm walking in obedience to them. And then John 13, 17 says, now, you, now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. So in other words, now that you've seen where I've been talking about surrender and obedience, and he was talking about the ways of God, he says, God will bless you for doing these. And I am a firm believer in that, that God wants to bless you on a daily, on a weekly, on a monthly basis. He wants to bless you. You are his children. I'm telling you, when we take Reed, Rhett, and Riggs to Walmart, and they want a toy, they get a toy because we're their grandparents and we want to bless them even though they probably don't need it. We want to bless them because we love them that much. And 1 Peter 1.5 says, and through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive the salvation which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So when we're walking in his obedience, it gives us an umbrella of protection. There again, not ever saying that anything will bad won't ever happen to you, but that you are still in the palm of his hands. When God tells you no, when he closes a door, when he removes someone from your life, when he tells you to slow down, 
when he doesn't allow that job to hire you, when he tells you to take a different way instead of your normal route, when he wakes you up in the middle of the night to pray, it's all part of God's divine protection plan. So listen, surrender, be obedient, and listen to what God has to say. On my wall in my living room, Psalms 46.10 is up there and it says, be still and know that I am God. So in other words, when we're still, we can listen to that. So when he, when he takes something out of your life or he changes your plans, know that it is his way of protecting you. you you can so trust in him. You may not can trust in a lot of people in this world, but you can trust in God. He protects you by his power and by his love. You are in the palm of his hand and the enemy cannot pluck you out. That means regardless of what happens in this life, that you have eternal security with him. And when you're walking in obedience, you are walking in that divine protection that he has. It's like a mighty shield surrendering you. But on the flip side of that, when we don't walk in obedience, when we do exactly what we want to do and we get out from under that, we are not under that divine protection anymore. We are not. You know, I, I, I've seen things where people have said uh, that it's part of the master's plan when they're not even living for the Lord. You can't expect to be a part of the master's plan or to be under his divine protection when you are being disobedient to God. It is through obedience that we have a protection. Now, I'm going to tell you what disobedience does. Disobedience is a very dangerous place to be. I'm talking about when you're walking away from God, you're doing what you want to do no matter who it hurts, what it does, how it affects your character, how it affects your church, how it affects your family. Disobedience takes you out from under an umbrella of protection and it opens a huge, huge door. Just like we said, obedience flings the door open for the Lord to come in and to work in your life. Disobedience also opens a door, and that is for the enemy to come in and to make a big mess of your life. So I warn you today, if you are listening to this and you are walking, you know if you're in disobedience, you can say all day that God has done this or God's done that. When You know, you know when you're in disobedience. You know, we need to ask ourselves on a regular basis, Lord, is there anything that you've told me to do that I'm not doing? Or is there anything that you told me not to do that I'm doing? And be truthful with yourself. You can lie to people all day long. You can try it. You can put Facebook posts out. You can put Twitter out. You can put all kind of stuff out and try to make th people think that everything is wonderful and glorious and life is great. But you know. When you lay your head down on that pillow at night, you know where you really are in your relationship with the Lord. Obey His Word, even if it doesn't make logical sense to you at the time. Because when you obey His Word, the enemy knows he can't touch you. He can't touch you. As so MC Hammer said, you can't touch this. You know, when you are walking in the Word of God, when you have surrendered and you're in obedience to Him, you are outside of the domain of the devil and you're inside the realm of God. Obey Him. Obey Him even when it's inconvenient for you, when it makes you uncomfortable and causes you to have to give up something that you love or something of value to you. Now, that is not popular in 2018. The world will tell you, if it makes you happy, do it. Um... I've seen people say, as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. No, that's not. What matters is where is your relationship with God? You're going to stand before him one day. You're going to answer. You are. We are. All of us are going to. We're going to answer for everything that we've done. We're going to answer for everything that we've not done. We're going to answer for things that he told us not to do. Be always before his face. Re ask him for his wisdom and his instruction and then do what he says to do. You know, you can become unhappy, you can become frustrated, you can become discouraged, you can become depressed about your life. I've been there. But I also know that there's been times when I just wanted to walk away from everything. And the Lord quickened to my spirit that he is the answer. Jesus, oh, there was an Andre Crouch song that was so popular when I was um, a teenager. And it says, Jesus is the answer for the world today 
Above him there's no other, cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other, because Jesus is the way. And it said, he's the truth and the life. Jesus is the way. He won't lead you astray. Jesus is the way. Jesus has been the way and he is still the way. Now, we can't be haphazard with how we live our life. If we do not agree to surrender and be obedient to God, we will never live the full capacity of the life that he has designed for us. I pray today that you take this to heart. These lessons are never haphazard. God gives these lessons to me to teach to my girls. And then I know that when I teach them to them, oh, we had uh, the most awesome spirit come upon my girls last Tuesday night when I taught this lesson. It doesn't matter if you're listening to this lesson a year later on YouTube because God's word will never return void. It will always be, go forth and be strong. So if you know that you need to surrender your life and surrender your will and be in obedience to God so that you are walking in that divine protection, just pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Father, thank you for protecting me. Help me learn how to fully trust in your protection and leading. Forgive me if I have not obeyed you because I'm repenting, Father. Even when I don't understand why, even when it makes no sense at all to my head, help me learn to follow you. I declare I'm obedient, submissive to your spirit, and I continue to see your divine protection in my life and in the lives of those I pray for. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I hope you pray that prayer, and I hope that this lesson ministers to you, that it teaches you and guides you that, yeah, you've got to be walking in his obedience, to have victory, to know that there is a force so much bigger than what we are that's leading and guiding and directing our lives. Praise God for that. I enjoy life, I love life, I love my family, I love my children, I love my house, I love my husband, I love retirement, but I don't wanna think that this is all there ever is because there is so much more for us, for us after this life is over. The Bible says that this life is but a vapor and thereafter we're gonna see the face of Jesus. Now you can either stand before him knowing that you've obeyed or that you've disobeyed and you have set where you're gonna spend eternity. So I just pray today that this is ministered to you. I always like to end my videos with the scripture, John 10, 10. It says, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the word of God says that I come, Jesus Christ came, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Until next time, love you guys.